Live from the PCTV studios, the Monday Morning Quarterback. Hey, good evening, everyone, and welcome to yet another edition of the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. I'm Dave Ridenour, the Monday Morning Quarterback, and tonight we are live at the Colebrookdale Railroad Depot right here in downtown uh, Boyertown, right behind the Durango's right off of East Philadelphia Avenue in Main Street in uh, Boyertown. We got a good show planned for you tonight. We're going to meet the Boyertown coach and one of his players as a first-year coach at Boyertown. So we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to take a quick break as our norm. Uh, when we come back, Coach Mick and I are going to look at all the action from the last week's uh, ball games. But again, remember, we are live at the Colebrookdale Railroad here in Boyertown. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. Back here at the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Again, I'm Dave right now, the Monday Morning Quarterback. As usual, I am joined by former St. Pius football coach, Jim Mick and, and Coach, uh, last week of uh, non-league games, if you will, as uh, the area Pioneer Athletic Conference get, teams are getting ready for some league play, which we're excited about. But it was the last week of non-divisional games, if you will, and there were some interesting things happening in our area. Absolutely. And as I said last week, I'm looking forward to after this independent schedule to get into league play, and I think we'll talk about that as we as we get into our program here tonight. Absolutely. As what we normally do is we look at our top five first before we get started into breaking down last week's games. And, and again, the top five is brought to you by the Reinhardt Painting Brothers. Go check out uh, Reinhardt. Keith and Ronnie Reinhardt have been good, loyal supporters for the Monday Morning Quarterback for a long time. Stop in and give them a call for all your painting needs. Let's start at the top. Pottsgrove, 4-0 with another big win last weekend. Sits at number one. Number two, Owen J. Roberts starting the, uh, their season off as well as they've had in many, many scenes. Coach uh, Rich Kolka doing a great job over in Bucktown. Pope John Paul, 4-0 for the first time in their school history. Uh, Roy Graver is excited about his squad. Uh, in the third spot, the defending uh, Pac-10 whatever's last year, they did a lot of things. Perk Yeoman Valley at 3-1. and one. If they're losing all their big guys, Jaworski and Sturm, Coach Heist has them playing very well. And Spring Ford checks in at the five spot after another big win, which evens their record at 2-2. Two and two. 
Well, Jim, let's talk about that first uh, place team in our top five. That was the PCTV Network Game of the Week, Pottsgrove at Glen Mills. Pottsgrove was able to win that ball game 38 to 20. Well, we know about Glen Mills because Glen Mills over the years is always a good, big, physical team with kids that can run. And usually we talk about Pottsgrove's offense. I want to start out tonight talking a little bit about Pottsgrove's defense. Wow, 169 yards total offense, five sacks, led by Ryan Bedolas. And not near as good as his father yet, but he, he will get there. But they had five sacks overall. And if you're going to win anything in any league or any type of competition, you better be good defensively. Well, you know, I know your perfect formula for winning football games and, and starting to rebuild is that good defense and a good solid run attack. And Posco is certainly epitomizing that early, as you mentioned, only giving up 169 yards. Many of those yards in the fourth quarter when the game was already in hand as Glenn Mills scored two touchdowns at the end of the game. But, of course, you have to start with Rasul Faison as well, 156 yards and a touchdown. And what they say is a highlight reel touchdown run in that second half. Now, how many great tailbacks has Potts Grove had over the years? Many, many. Yep. Okay. Coach Penny Packer said in the newspaper that the 46-yard touchdown run by Rasul Faison was the best open field run he has ever seen. That's saying something. And you know, one of the things is sort of, a, if we want to bring up something I'm sure Coach Penny Packer is going to work on uh, this week, is they had 10 penalties. You know, I know it was a physical game. Uh, it was a sloppily played game, particularly in that second half when there seemed to be a penalty on every play as Glenn Mills had 16 penalties. But you know, it's not usual to see Pottsgrove uh, get undisciplined, and I'm sure Rick will work on that this week. Well, you, first of all, they don't fumble. They, they make very few mistakes. They're not highly penalized. And you can't get penalized in key games. Oh boy, it comes back and bites you in the foot every time. Yeah, and again, Cisco is a guy, Jay Cisco, who was uh, filling in at the quarterback spot. Uh, Ryan Finn was a guy who was there last year who was a good all-around athlete. But Cisco doing another job. He only threw the ball three times, but two of them went for uh, touchdowns. And he's doing a heck of a job in there at the quarterback spot. Well, that's pretty good percentage. Yeah. Two out of three, yeah. very high percentage. And he had a total offense between run and pass of almost 90 yards. So that's saying something about Cisco. And he seems to be getting better every ball game. And they're going to need that. They certainly are. Again, if they have aspirations of winning that league uh, championship or their division championship and then qualifying for the playoffs, they're going to need to find a way to get those eight guys out of the box who are all loading up against their tough run game. Now, hey, let's travel over to Bucktown, Jim, and, and talk about Rich Kolka's gang. They started off the year 4-0 with another big win, a shutout win, against Upper Marion. Uh, we knew that their defense was going to be strong this year. They had a lot of returners back, but a uh, big shutout against Upper Marion. And Dawson Stewart, it looks like he's rounding into shape well, at that quarterback spot. Everything starts over at O&J with Dawson Stewart. And as we said last week, it's been that way for maybe, for maybe three years. And eight of the nine possessions, first possessions, ended up in scores for O&J Roberts. And I know the Bucktown Boosters and all those people over there are feeling really good because they've had a couple lean years and Coach Coca and those kids are bringing it back right now, 4-0. Well, you talked about Pottsgrove's D. How about giving O&J's D a little bit credit? They only gave up 53 total yards uh, against Upper Marion, so tough sledding uh, for the gang down in King of Prussia. Dawson Stewart was responsible for four touchdowns. He ran for two and threw for two more, so he certainly had a big game. His senior year has started off very well. He's good on both sides of the ball. 189 yards, total offense, run and pass, and he's got the Prowicki kid to throw the ball to, along with a kid by the name of Henrich. Uh, so they, they have some skill uh, positions that are well uh, suited, and, and I'm looking forward to when they get into real competition with some of the stronger teams in the Liberty Division. And the bigger schools. And it's funny, I, you know, I keep an eye on now on Sean Pawicki now after his father played for you at yeah. Pius, and now we have a, another generation of them. So I keep my eye on it, but he had another good all-around game. He does a little bit of everything out of the backfield. He runs it, he catches it, and he's a solid, solid defender for the Cats. Without a doubt. Yep. All right, the next game that we have is Pope John Paul. I, again, another team who has started off better than they had in school history. 4-0, Rory Graver doing a good job down there. You like the quarterback a lot. 
I think he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league. He threw three touchdown passes, plus being a good quarterback, he has some good skilled kids to throw the ball to. Danny, Seren uh, Danny Serino, A.J. Natale, uh, Jake Bilstein, all of those kids are talented, and they're showing it on the scoreboard, scoring 40 points against a well-coached Schuylkill Valley team. We know Jeff Shalott. He's been up there a lot of years. Very, very good football coach. Hurting a little bit now with numbers and injuries. I thought actually the game would be a little closer, but when you got the skill that PJP has, they're going to put it on the board. Well, again, 522 total yards uh, for Pope John Paul. And again, another big offensive output, all, all centered around De Laurent, as you mentioned, Serena with three touchdown grabs. But how about A.J. Natale? We didn't talk as much about him this early in the early going, but 137 yards, you talked about them improving their run game, and they certainly did so Friday night. He's been there a couple of years, and he's seeing the ball a little bit more this year. But we can talk about Natale and Bill Stein and some of those other skilled positions. But I still think that how far PJP goes this season is going to revolve around the offensive line and how much it can improve. All right. And again, let's go down to Perk Valley and check them out. They were at a very tough place to play at Interboro. Uh, we've seen Interboro many, many times. They've hooked up with Pottsgrove in the district playoffs time and time again. They have a legendary coach down there who's been there forever. A couple young sophomores stepping up for Ronnie, uh, Robbie Heisgang and doing a good job. Mokia and a new quarterback, Peterman. Let me say something first about Interboro. A lot of the people up here don't know much about Interboro outstanding program and I give P, uh, I give Perk Valley a lot of credit for the schedule that they have played early. Playing Interboro is not like playing the Sisters of the Sick. They're a good solid playoff program every year and Perk Yeoman Valley had to suck it up and play hard to win that game 21-13. Yeah, and it was a really a tough game. I know Rob Heist after the game said he was never as proud of a team as he was uh, Friday night down at Interboro. He said his team was very resilient. They kept fighting through some adversity, some, some uh, disappointments, some fumbles and things, but they came back strong. And Mokia doing a heck of a job with 137 yards and two TDs. And this young sophomore quarterback had a lot of pressure on him following Stephen Sturm, and he's holding his own. Well, like they're like the unknown team. Yeah. We don't know them because we remember Sturm, we remember Jaworski, we remember Dave Williams. For three years we've yeah. been talking about that guy. Now we get Cole Petterlin and Moshe and people like that. We're getting to know who they are right now. They're a young team, and they were very, very good defensively. And as we say many times, that's so important. It certainly is. And again, Robbie Heist in his second year doing a heck of a job. Well, you know, Jim, let's take a quick time out, uh, get a chance to catch a breath here. We're live over here at the Colebrookdale Railroad Depot in Boyertown, PA, right off of Philadelphia Avenue. It's a beautiful uh, venue, a beautiful night. We had a, a great opportunity to come over here and talk to Frank Vitara and Nathaniel Guest, who was actually in charge of this whole operation. So we're looking forward to seeing some things around here on the railroad as well. But we're going to take a quick time out, and we come back. We have a little bit more, and then we're going to look at next week's game as well, right here on the Vallejo Stone Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Beans Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243. 800-222-0243 or online at fredbeans.com. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from great burgers to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs to the friendly Doc service. Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, 
where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer, Jr. Call us or visit our website now. Back here on the Vlahos Dunn Shorts Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Dave Ridenauer, the Monday Morning Quarterback, joined by my co-host, legendary coach from St. Pius X High School, Jim Mick. And, and Jim's trying to downplay a little bit, but he, uh, you've got some, an honor coming up in the, in the near future down there, Pope John Paul. They're going to they're gonna do something. What, what are they going to give you, Jim, yeah, a, a plaque or something? Yeah, what are they going to yeah, give you, a yeah. plaque? Yeah, it's very nice. I'm honored to be uh, one of the legacy schools because... PJP is part of a number of, of former high schools, and I, I got the information last week. I didn't think you knew about it. Naturally, you know you everything. You know I'm well connected. You're a townie. <laughs> You're a townie. You know. yeah. But it is, it is quite an honor. What, yeah. what are they going to have? Are they going to have a ceremony? Are you going to be at a game? I, I, th I don't know all the details. I think it's around October 13th, okay. October 14th. It's around homecoming, 14th et 14th is a Saturday. That's when we have our whole Yeah, but there. I think something's the 13th, okay. too. i got to find out a little bit more. But... Uh, it's certainly, it's certainly an honor. Well, it certainly is, and certainly well deserved. Uh, all the things that you did, uh, we can't go anywhere without public people talking about Coach Mick. And it was funny. I was at Mike's Brick Oven Pizza, who were kind enough to donate some some goodies here for us again tonight, as they normally do. And Mike Crater said, "Is Coach Mick still on that show?" And I said, "Yes, he is." He said, "Tell him I said hello." I said. He used to yell at him all the time. Oh, I used to yell at him all the time. <laughs> He'd be daydreaming in um, class. Yeah. yeah. Crater, will you wake yeah, up yeah, for crying out loud? Yeah. I said, am I that bad of a teacher that you fall asleep all the time? That's what he said. He said, used to, he'd be daydreaming all the time. you yell at him, Crater, to wake up. It was pretty funny. But, again, we want to thank Mike Crater for bringing uh, the food over here for Mike's Brick Oven Pizza. Get in there and check it out. He got strambolis and pizzas and wings. He's always number one in the area in the uh, Pottstown Mercury when they do their food uh, uh, food awards and things. So check out Mike and uh, tell the Monday morning quarterback sent you. Well, let's check out Springford now, Jim. You, obviously, your son is a defensive coordinator there. He's been assistant coach for a long time. We had Chad Brubaker on the show last week at Doc's uh, Irish Pub uh, back in Boyertown. They bounced back with a big win after a tough loss to a Will good Wilson team. 45-21 against an always tough Exeter squad. Highly ranked in, in 5A is Exeter. Highly ranked. And I'll say this about Springford. They continue to improve on both sides of the ball. They start out a little sluggish early in the season, but they're coming along right now. That game was 31-7 to at half. I couldn't believe it. It was 38-7 to at the beginning of the third quarter. Springford emptied the bench, and it ended up something like 45-21. 45-21. And they got that Sarangoulis kid up there that's a heck of a player, and Undercuffler's a heck of a player. But I remember early in the season, I thought Boyertown gave them a, a tussle. They certainly did. And, again, you know, that young defense at Springford had, they had to replace all 11 starters from last year. And, uh, you know, last year Springford had a great season with a senior-laden team, obviously. So a lot of youngsters – and they're uh, learning and getting better each week. Springford certainly is going to make some noise starting this week when they get into the interdivisional play. Now, De Francisco is a guy I know you like, Coach. Uh -oh. 251 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. He's about this wide and about this tall. Mm -hmm. And you say little kids can't play football. Well, let me tell you, he can play. Yep. He breaks that first wave of defense. He's gone. He's tough. He can run. He's got movability. And... Uh, He's also very good at the corner playing defense. So he is a solid football player. And you see them come out, and you wouldn't even think he was. And, and they got a couple good receivers down there now. And one comes to my mind in the name of Ryan Engro, whose father and both uncles played for us at Pius. And my son tells me this Engro kid's going to be a heck of a player. But, but they also got the Goldsmith kid, and, and they got a couple other good receivers, and, and T.J. Pergine well, as I said, is a goes around the yeah, he, he is, is something else. Yeah, he really is. He, he uh, had three touchdowns through the air and 178 yards. He is certainly one of the premier quarterbacks. You talked about De Laurentiis earlier. There's a lot of good ones in our area and in this league. 
All right, and let's go back to my alma mater. We were there the week before when they turned on the lights, when they got them back up and running, and we had a great time over there. Unfortunately, they didn't fare so well against a good Bishop Shanahan squad, but they came on strong and beat Methacton, again, a team who's been struggling. Paul DePriest had a real tough go this year. Uh, they hadn't scored a point in their first three games, and Pottstown holds on the win, 12-6. to six. Well, Congratulations, Mark Fisher, on his first win. Well, you've got to be very happy for your alma mater because they were struggling. Mark Fisher got his first win, and that's, that's always a highlight for, for any coach, and hopefully he gets a number of more. But I think the big turnaround was that they had 300 yards total offense, and we talked last week they weren't moving the ball yeah, on the ground. The Jimmy Calverio and those kids that make up that offensive line over at Pottstown did a good job. Keep it going. Yeah, and again, let's give a little credit to the quarterback, Owen Morton, who threw for 194 yards and a touchdown. And again, they gave the coach a little Gatorade bath and the game ball and everything. Congratulations, Mark Fisher. And Here's to hoping you can win some, some more games over at Pottstown. I was impressed by their defensive rush game that they held Methacton only 16 yards on the ground, Jim, and that's a good start for that defense. That's a good defensive game against anybody, believe me. Yeah. That, that many yardage, that less yardage, All right. believe me. All right, so let's look at some of the games coming up this week, Jim. That you know, we always preview the games coming up, and particularly this week, as we now are getting into divisional play. We have three games in the Liberty Division, which are the large schools, and three games in the Frontier Division, which are the smaller schools. That goes in, uh, by student population. Let's start in the Liberty Division. There's a Saturday afternoon game, Springford at Norristown. Jim, how do you look at that one? Well, I saw early in the season that Norristown had a big win against uh, Plymouth, White Marsh. Plymouth yeah. White Marsh, and Plymouth White Marsh is a good football team, yep. but they got handled pretty easily by Penn Wood. I'm, I'm going to go big time with Spring Ford because they're playing well on, on both sides of the ball. they they got to get down there on a Saturday afternoon, which they're not used to playing Saturday afternoon games. I don't, to be honest, know that much about Norristown, but I, I think Spring Ford's coming on. Yeah, they are. And again, uh, Coach Brubaker wants to have them peaking at the right time. He still has his eyes on those uh, playoffs uh, for Spring Ford. Here's a game that really uh, both teams are looking forward to, I'm sure. We have uh, Boyertown traveling to Methacton. Both these two teams have had a tough go of it in, in the beginning part of the season. Boyertown with a couple of close games. They appear to be getting better, and I think T.J. Miller's going to have his gang ready for Methacton. Well, the only thing I'm going to say about that game is where is Methacton going to stand with the, with the teachers on strike? Well, they're, they're going to play. They're going to play, yes. okay. So yeah. that means they, they're going to be able to practice. And uh, Boyertown, I, I, I think with T.J. Miller and his new staff and, and a bunch of young kids, give them time. They're going to get better. They're going to develop. Coach LaPree down there is struggling, but Coach LaPree is a heads-up, positive guy that is going to make the kids play hard. I think it could be a good ball game. Yeah, well, again, with, with uh, Matthias and Cap and, and yep. Marcus Thomas, they certainly have three weapons that Paul LaPree is going to have to game plan for against the Bears. Now, the game is going to be on the PCTV network, a uh, game I'll be at, the game of the week. Owen J. Roberts undefeated going down to Perk Valley to take on those Vikings in what should be a heck of a ball game. And, you know, you talked about Owen J. Roberts starting off pretty well. Well, let's see how well that program's coming along. We're going to take on a very solid squad in the Vikings. Absolutely. But the Vikings squad is very young. As both of us know, Owen J. with uh, Stewart and people like that, they've been around a lot of years. So as far as experience go, Owen J has the ed edge, has the advantage. They have to go to Perk Valley, but I'm looking forward to this game because it should be a barn burner. I really. am too. I'd yep. like to see. I, I think Dawson Stewart is certainly one of the uh, better players in this league, and they have a couple other guys on defense who are playing well as well. I just jump over into the Frontier Division. Pope John Paul is traveling to Grigg Memorial to take on the Trojans on Friday night. And again, they're coming off a big win against Schuylkill Valley on paper right now. Pope John Paul playing pretty well would seem to have a little bit of an edge on the Trojans. Well, there's no doubt about that with PJP being 4-0. But Coach Graver, knowing him, he'll keep those kids' heads out of the clouds, get them down to earth. Pottstown's got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. The Morton kids playing pretty well. 
They have got also some young players that could improve as we go through. But right now, the edge stands to PJP. And another game, Potsgrove, our number one team in the top five here on the Vlogs Dunn Insurance Monday morning quarterback show. Travels to Upper Marion. Upper Marion coming off a tough loss to Owen J. Roberts. It, it looks like a pretty lopsided affair on paper. Maybe Coach Brown can get those guys revved up and give the Falcons a little bit of a tussle. Well, I know Vic Brown pretty well. He played for us a year or so at Kutztown. And he was at Reading High. He was at Spring Ford last year. He's a dedicated young coach. Like any coach coming in, you got to give them time. Let them develop the program. Let them get the kids to know each them and know each other. And it, it's going to be a little bit. So you got to be patient. But who's going to beat Pottsgrove in this division? I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Yeah. And in our last game is Upper Park with a surprisingly poor showing against Cocalico. They were really excited about their team this year. Uh, they started off pretty well, but uh, they're back to 500 now. They have to travel to Phoenixville. Evan Brisblatt and his gang looking for a first win and maybe a big upset win at uh, Washington Field in Phoenixville on Friday night. Well, as you mentioned, Cocalico beat up her perp 56 to nothing, which was a surprise. Big surprise. But Cocalico is one of the best teams up in Berks County in any division, they have outscored their opponents 167 to 28 in three games. They are a powerhouse. So Upper Perk did not lose to any. Uh, right, no cupcakes, that's for and, sure. Yeah. Uh, Phoenixville struggling. And you know what I say when teams get struggling, if I can say anything, because I've gone through it myself. you got to be positive with those kids because they're losing. You can't get after them like you can kids when you when you got a winning streak going. Be positive and teach, 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 and hopefully they'll get better. All right. Well, that'll about do it for our first segment here with Coach Jim Mick as uh, we're about ready for a timeout. We're going to get an opportunity to meet the coach and our player of the week here in uh, momentarily. But, Jim, it's always good to see you. Next week we'll be back in the studio. Oh, so, all right, uh, so you know where you're going that's there. Always you're good always a good yeah. shot in there. <laughs> but, again, I want to thank uh, Jim Mick for stopping by again. We're going to take a quick timeout. We're going to meet the coach from Boyertown and our player of the week right after these words from our sponsors. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Beans Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243, 800-222-0243, or online at fredbeans.com. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, give Ron or Keith Reinhardt a call and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. 
Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer, Jr., call us or visit our website now. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance. And we're in your community. Hey, we're back here live at the Colebrookdale Railroad Depot in downtown Boyertown, right behind Durango's, right off of Philadelphia Avenue. It's a beautiful facility here, sitting here with all the trains and the new things going on, Nathaniel Guest. Frank Butar and all the people over here. Stop on over and get yourself a chance to see these things. There's all kinds of great things happening here in Boyertown. Well, I want to introduce uh, T.J. Miller, the head coach from Boyertown in his first season, and Jerry Cap, a guy I've been trying to get on the show for the last couple of years. I haven't been able to do so. It hasn't worked out. But, guys, uh, I'm glad I get an opportunity to introduce you, Jerry, and, again, to, to see you, uh, excuse me, Jerry, and, and also T.J., uh, introduce you to the Monday morning quarterback crowd. Guys, thanks for stopping by. Thanks, thanks for having us. us. All right. Well, again, we're in your backyard. I thought it would be right. great to get you guys over here. And I know you have a, a busy schedule, and, and I want to appreciate you taking okay. some time to come in. Now, TJ, some assistant coaching jobs uh, in, your, in your previous coaching career. You were at Penn Manor. You're Governor Mifflin. You're offense coordinator at Muhlenberg. Yep. Tell me a little bit about the transition from the assistant spot to that, that the big guy on top, the head coach. Uh, I think when you become the head coach, you don't realize how much work the head coach actually does because the head coach puts so much aside that the assistants don't really ever know about. Uh, so it was a little bit of a transition, but I got a, a good staff that's working with me, got a great family and a great support system here at Boyertown. So. Uh, it, it's been a good transition to that role. Good. Now, Nick Palladino is certainly a, a longtime friend of ours right. and, and the athletic director. I'm sure he's been a good guy to help you smooth and, and help you with that transition of wearing that, that big hat as the head coach. Yeah, I couldn't ask for a better athletic director to work under as uh, Mr. Palladino. He does a great job. Uh, he does a great job with the kids, and he's a kid-first athletic director, and you can't ask for more than that. Absolutely. Now, Jerry, you know, you have your second head coach now. You know, uh, um, you, you had a, a coach last year that was sort of ran a different offense, different style, you know, and you were back and forth between quarterback and wide receiver, played quarterback most of the year then. Tell me about your transition now to Coach Miller. Uh, it's definitely a different transition, but what I like about it this year to last year is the dedication on our team and just – the energy that this offense brings and like every game when it starts to work coach goes triple option baby triple option and when it's run right it works but it's definitely a big transition from the spread offense to the triple option you know it's one of the things that i, I looked in the in the preview and, and, and McManaman and some of your your guys you know the atmosphere is better than it has been the last few years there's a lot more energy you're chest bumping you're having some fun with the kids yeah. practice is fun again i'm sure that's something that you really work hard to try to strive for it is you got to have fun it's a it's a fun game um, and it, it's about these kids. It's about making sure these kids have fun, learn a little bit about football, learn a little bit about life along the way. So uh, it's a different culture that we're trying to change here. Now, I'm sure with some of the leaders that you had and in, in the seniors coming back, Jerry in particular, uh, I'm sure they've helped your transition a little bit as well. Tell me about this guy right here sitting beside me. Yeah, I talked to Jerry on the way home uh, from Academy Park the other day uh, on the bus, and I told him that any coach would be lucky to have a player like Jerry Cap uh, To walk into a situation, I just wish I had more time with him. Uh, Jerry, uh, great person, great athlete, great student. You can't ask for much more than that. Well, you know, you've been settled in uh, a little bit more uh, this year. Um, would you prefer to play quarterback or wide out? What, uh, what kind of preference do you have on the offensive side of the ball? I prefer wide out, but I told my coaches at the beginning of the season, wherever they need me, I'll play, wherever benefit the team more. 
Well, there's a younger guy, Aiden Mathias, who is also being groomed at, at that spot as the quarterback. Tell me a little bit about his progression and, and how he works w w with Jerry. Aiden's a great athlete. Aiden's still learning the position. He's doing all the right things to improve his game as a quarterback. Uh, against uh, Academy Park, made a couple nice reads. He has two really long touchdown runs after reading uh, uh, the end like he was supposed to. And he's really progressing uh, nicely for us in that position. All right, when well, you also play defense, and uh, yeah. you like that side of the ball, and, and uh, I like you back there picking off passes mm -hmm. and, and playing that corner to safety position. Uh, which do you prefer, offense or defense? Uh, I prefer offense, but I like the excitement that defense brings. Uh, there's nothing like getting a tackle on third down, stop them short, and just the crowd, just the sound of the crowd afterwards. But offense is definitely my preference. Yeah. But. Well, there's a couple of guys you match up pretty well with, like a Kendra and a couple of those guys too. So there's some big time players that I'm sure you have a little bit battles with yeah. in the Pioneer Athletic Conference. Yeah, I have a couple of friends actually. Ryan's one of my one of my better friends in the Pac-10. Definitely a great player. Well, again, that was always sort of a rival for you guys, and you started off uh, with them again this year, and it was the first time they were able to get the upper hand on you for a while, but I'm sure that was a, a tough physical game for you as well. Yeah, it definitely was. Upper Perk's a great team this year. They've been rebuilding for about two years now, but it's all starting to click, and it was definitely a tough team. Yeah. We weren't expecting that. Well, you've had a tough start. You know, you haven't been able to be on the winning side of the ledger yet, uh, uh, TJ, but you've been in some games. Exeter is certainly a game that, you know, was could have gone either way. You gave Potsgrove a pretty good scare in the beginning of the game when you were up after the first quarter, 14-7. to seven. So, obviously, some of your hard work and the players' hard work, are, you can see that coming to fruition. Yeah, you can. You can see every week at practice. We're, we're getting better and we're getting – uh, to, to the point that we need to be. It's easy to just try to judge progress by wins and losses, but there's a whole lot more that goes into it, and we're, we're making progress in where we want to go. That's great. And again, you know, you have uh, you had, had a tough one against Academy Park, and you got to sort of sweep that one under the carpet. Now you're getting ready for your divisional play. Now you play the, the big boys, the PVs, the OJs, the, you know, the Spring Fours, Norristown, and so on. I, are you guys excited about that, getting into your Pioneer Athletic Conference play now? Yeah, I'm definitely excited to start that. Okay, coach. Uh... Yeah, you know, coming from different leagues, I'm excited to be a part of uh, a bigger division, uh, the Pioneer Athletic Conference. I'm excited to be here, and every week's a big week for us. Well, you know, I, I I'm a part of the coaches association, so I see at some of the yep. meetings. Uh, how how do you how do you take into all the coaches and everybody else around the league? It seems to be a pretty tight league. You know, it, it really is. The, the coaches around here have been great. Uh, you know, Coach Heist at Perk Valley, you know, Coach Lepre. You know, they they've been doing a great job and they've been reaching out and you know been able to uh, you know reach out. Coach Fisher, you know, happy that he got his first win uh, last Friday. So it it, it really is a. Uh, uh, you know, a bond that you get when you get into this position. Now, is it a little bit different the, the, the way the Pioneer athletic coaches do it as far as the film and all the different things? I mean, are you used to all that kind of stuff as well? Uh, they do it a little bit different in Berks County in terms of uh, film exchange meetings and, and those types of things. But overall, you know, we all understand that we're in it for the same reason. We want to win football games and help kids develop. Well, you are also teaching in the Boyertown School District, which is one of the things that I, I thought hurt Boyertown the last few years. And there wasn't the head coach as, in, right. as a teaching position. And I'm sure that's a big help as well. It's, and that's why I can't thank uh, Dr. Cooper, uh, Mr. Rupert at uh, uh, East Junior High, and Mr. Palladino for, for knowing that that's important. You want to build a football program, it's important to have a teacher in the building. Yeah. So, you know, and I get to see these kids in the hallway, and you know, we get to talk about you know, other things besides just football. Well, you have to recruit, and I hope, as well, get <laughs> some more kids, get some of those younger kids out, because I know they've had some problems with, in the younger right. grades trying to get teams together, which really blows my mind, Jerry, because I'm, I'm a Pottstown guy, and, and I always thought one of the big things that Boyertown had going for it was East and West Junior High School. There you have two junior highs all going to build into to the high school. It, it's sort of amazing that they've had some problems with the numbers. Uh, what do you hear around school? Uh, I just hear that ever since last year, um, people didn't want to be a part of the football team really because they saw that we were losing a lot of games. But I think Coach Miller brings in an, uh, a brand new attitude and he's trying to change the culture. And I think people are actually – We've actually had a couple of people that joined late because they wanted to be a part of something special, and we're trying to change the culture here. Well, that's awesome, TJ. And again, you can, I can feel it. You're just sitting here, you know, you're excited about what's going on, and you certainly Absolutely. are a high energy guy. All right, let's talk a little bit about Methacton. Now, that's sure. your first game. Uh, they've had a, a tough go of it here as well. And, uh, you know, they could be sitting up there thinking, well, maybe we got a shot this week. Uh, right. Who knows? I don't know what's going through their minds. But what's going through your, your mind here as you get ready to open up against Methacton? Like I said, you can't take any uh, team in this league lightly. That going against Methacton, knowing that they're looking at us the same way that we're probably looking at them as 0-4, this is our shot. 
Um, and we also know that you know whoever wins this game is going to be sitting at the top of the standings at the end of the week, and it's a new season that starts now. Um, it's not a team that you can take lightly. They got they have some athletes out there that that can you know push people around. They got you know a little bit of size for the guys that are on the field. So definitely not a team that we're overlooking. What have you seen so far in your film study and the things you have? Uh, what do you need to do to get yourself ready? Let's talk offensively first here. I've seen a couple of good defensive players. Um, we're definitely preparing for them and. We're trying to build plays that would work against their tendencies, but I definitely see a bunch of good football players out there, good skillful guys that we definitely should be aware of. Okay, and defensively, what what is uh, Mathacken do offensively that you're going to pay attention to a little bit here this week? Uh, they're a pretty spread out team. Um, they're like 50-50 run pass, uh, maybe a little more run side, but we definitely have to be ready for both because I remember dating back to last year, they came out with a couple trick plays early and they caught they caught us on this trick play so we're definitely gonna have to look for those but definitely just playing dif, dif, discipline football well it was, i remember it was a high scoring game too back and forth yeah, uh, yeah it was it was certainly a, one of those exciting games that came down to the end what do you what do you see coach what what are you going to look for this week and how do you get your team ready to go against <laughs> the fact we get our team ready to go the way we do every you know every other week and we're saying that you know it's a new season right now and you know we're looking forward to league play um, oh, you know, we want to try to, you know, we got a lot of good athletes that we want to try to get the ball to a couple of them a little bit more um, and, you know, try to play our brand of football. You know, try to, you know, we're a triple option team, so we want to we want to really start establishing that. That's good to get that offensive front working as well and playing some, some good defense. Right. Well, again, you know, you have PV, you have O&J, uh, yep. you have Springford and those guys on the horizon. Have you been able to check out some of those teams? I know you know a lot of the guys through yeah. basketball and football and stuff. Uh, what have you seen uh, in the early going? Uh, I know that. All those teams have a lot of great athletes. Dawson Stewart, TJ Bergine, um, Sean from O and J. They're definitely great athletes and threats on the football field, not just a Yeah. But it's gonna be fun. It's gonna yeah. be good and and, I, and like I said, I, I wish you the best. I I'm really pulling for you and Thank you. and uh, you know it's always good to, to get over here and, and meet everybody. I said I've been trying to get you on, it just didn't work out the last <laughs> couple of years and your coach was a whatever didn't work out and but I'm glad that I got an opportunity to have you on, Jerry. You've been a fun guy to watch the last few years and, and again as, as your all around athlete. I just have a little uh, memento here from the Complete Graphics, uh, one of my new sponsors this year, they do a heck of a job. They're down there on High Street in Pottstown. Go see the Ritwage boys for all your printing and stuff needs. But I just have a little certificate for you there as uh, the player of the week. And again, I'm wishing uh, good things for you and hoping for all the best. And, and I'm sure uh, all caliber, another all caliber type season, all league caliber type season for you. TJ, get that first one, and then they start to fall <laughs> after that. Yeah, that. That's the plan. That's yeah, what we're trying to do. Yep. I know. Coming from a former coach, I knew that first one was hard, but then they started getting a little right. bit easier <laughs> at that point. But all the best to you. All the best well, of luck you. to you guys. Again, you're at Methacton this week. TJ Miller in the first year at Boyertown as the head coach. And, again, a guy that's been around for a lot of years and a heck of a versatile athlete, football, basketball, and, again, uh, uh, football as well. Jerry Cap is our player of the week, number 10 from Boyertown. All right, we're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, i got my buddy Joe C. waiting in the wings. We're going to talk about the Eagles and whatever else comes up. But, again, I want to thank T.J. Miller and Jerry Cap for stopping by. Remember, we are live at the Colbrookdale Railroad here in Boyertown, PA. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterbacks right after this. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment, to countless draft beers, from great burgers, to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs, to the friendly Doc service. Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. 
Established in 1916 and granted membership into the Philadelphia Golf Association in 1920, Brookside Country Club is well known for its challenging layout and true fast greens. The William Gordon design provides a challenge for golfers of all abilities. Brookside Country Club offers traditional club amenities in a family-friendly atmosphere. Brookside Country Club, where elegance and excellence are par for the course. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Lawhurst on Insurance, and we're in your community. Hey, we're back here on the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Day right now. We're joined by my buddy, Joe C. We are called the Dynamic Duo, and we are brought to you by Fred Beans of Boyertown. But again, we are over here at the Colebrookdale Railroad Depot. We're on this beautiful wooden loading area. We got the open car beside us. Uh, I know Matt was over here this week, and we got some good pictures of the club car, the coach car, the dining car. Uh, we want to thank Nathaniel Guest and Frank Batara for their hospitality. It's been beautiful over here. Joe, really this is your nice. first time here, and you yeah, were really first, impressed with first it. First time. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get a tour. I asked Frank for a tour after the yeah. show. Um, but I, honestly, I thought it just sat here. Yeah, no. It moves. Oh, yeah, it moves. Oh, yeah. It, we saw like it move seven, this afternoon. 7 .8 know, miles in the pots yeah, down and back. back. Yeah. It takes about two hours. Yeah, it's cool. And you could have dinner. You yeah. could have uh, a little. What, well, they're having a wine? Yeah. They're having a wine tasting on uh, Saturday, yeah, September 30th. They got a farm to table in October and November. They got all kinds of good food. They love the uh, hot October and, and Halloween stuff. They got zombie things happening. So get on the get on the website there at the Colebrookdale Railroad .com. Check out all the information again. Check out Nathaniel and Frank and everybody else here uh, at the Railroad Depot. But it is really an impressive, impressive situation here. Very nice. Well, you know what? Uh, we're going to throw out the Big Frank question. We're going right. to get this thing right. rolling. We're going to give right. you a little bit of time to think about it. And again, Frank Batara is here. His brother Ronnie Batara, who is the proprietor of Clean Cut. Uh, lawn service. He is our sponsor. He uh, provides us the fund that we have with the Big Frank question of the week. Big Frank was our number one fan for a lot of years and unfortunately passed away, but he is still a big part of the show. Here's our Big Frank question of the week, Joseph. Uh, Deshaun Watson, when he rushed for 67 yards in his first NFL start, it was the fourth most yards rushing for a quarterback in his first NFL start. I, the question to you is, who is the number one guy uh, who rushed for the most yards in his first NFL start from the quarterback position? And I'll give you a little time to think about that. Modern, modern yeah, era? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not asking you YA Tittle questions. In the modern era, era, who is the guy with the most yards in his first NFL quarterback Did game? Did he play for the Eagles? I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not giving you hints. I'm not giving you, I already told you it was a... <laughs> Uh, modern so you, day. So no hints. No hints. Is he playing now? About, no, he's not playing All right, now. Okay. okay. Anyway, I got the extra we got hint. the big Frank question. I got the extra hint. I know you did. <laughs> you did. I, yeah, I'm a sucker for you, Joe. You know that. <laughs> anyway, Joseph, it's great seeing you again. Yeah, uh, it's fun to be out here. Another beautiful yeah, night. That's two great, weeks yeah. in a row. Yeah. We got some fall, fall You're beautiful go lights. You're going to go north? 
a little more yeah, north. Yeah, we're going back to the studio next week. Oh, there you yeah, go. There we're going go. back to the studio. We're going to have to go south so it gets warmer <laughs> uh, in December, but who knows where we're going to go. Well, how about our Eagles? You know, they put up a pretty good fight against Kansas City. 27-20 uh, was the final score. I think the game was a lot closer than that. Uh, I was impressed with their defense. I thought their defense played as well as they could. I don't think the Eagles are as talented as the Kansas City Chiefs, Joe. But that was a pretty good football game. I mean, even, uh, you know, coming off of uh, last week's win with uh, the Skins, you know, I thought they, they played well defensively, and their offense was still a work in progress, um, and that proved to be it for the same thing as yesterday. Defense was good, but their the offense definitely needs some work. Well, you know, there's been a lot of talk uh, today, primarily, uh, and, you know, the, the, the armchair quarterbacks, they're not the Monday morning quarterback I am, that's for sure. But anyway, the armchair quarterbacks, and, and two of the things that they've been discussing uh, for the most part is the run game slash offensive line, and of course, Doug Peterson and his game day uh, calling of plays and preparation and things. Let's start off with the offensive line and run game, uh, Joe. You know, uh, you know the, the old adage was if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. Uh, they, they kept five running backs on their roster this year which sort of indicated to me that mm, they, were, they didn't really sure about any of them, so they're going to keep five because they don't know which one they're, they're dealing with. And, of course, they had a, a new left guard and, some, and the problems with the center. So how do you assess their run I mean, game? I mean, Jason Kelsey, to me, is not a, uh, a, a, a center that can pass block. He's got to get out in space. He's got to run sweep. He's the guy that's pulling and leading, leading the charge. Um, he's more of a run. But the, the thing gets me is, is everybody's like, yeah, and I heard the same thing today about the run game, the run game, and the run game. And it, it's the, the Garrett Blunt is not the running back to fit this system at all, at all. So let me ask you. Guy, guy, guy. So, go ahead. so I, in I essence, know. they brought in another Demarco Murray that doesn't fit this no, game. No, yeah, no. I mean, you could you could talk about having a running back and Ryan Matthews and letting Sean McCoy go, but yesterday I felt that the way the game was going, and I agree with with Peterson, the game dictated what he wanted to wanted to do. There were seven guys up in the box, and he was going to pass. He was going to pass. And whether or not Wentz well, dropped back 46 times or 50 times, it didn't matter. They got caught up in, in passing the ball and not running. You know, you look at all the stats, the quarterbacks that dropped back and threw more than 45 or 48, they all lost. I know. And they all lost. Yeah. Well, you know, and again, I, I, and I, and I like Darren Sproles a lot. I think he's a good little changeup yeah. guy. But he cannot be your primary no. ball carrier. And, and he cannot lead your team in, I agree. in rushes. And Wendell Smallwood's not the no, answer either. I, I'm not even sure why he's around. He gets hurt all the time. He, he's never really productive. And, and LeGarrette Blunt. I mean, I think that here's the situation that I thought. They were bringing him in for red zone offense primarily because they got, a lot of times they got stopped on third and one, yep. fourth and one, couldn't <coughs> punch it in from from the inside the 10-yard line. So that's what he was brought in for. And if you really look at it, they didn't need that yesterday. He wasn't in that situation. Exactly, exactly. I agree with you 100%. They weren't, they weren't in that situation, and that's why he wasn't on the field. And, and they're saying that Sproles is the best blocking back they have right now. Well, and he missed the block yesterday, too. He went to the wrong side yes, on a blitz yep. pickup. And, and even when he does stick his nose in there, he is, he is a, a smallish guy. I mean, he's a brute. He's, I, I love him. He fumbled the ball, though, trying to get that extra yard, which, which hurt, which led to a, a, a late field goal in that first half and some different things. But I, I just, I'm, I, I'm not sure what their identity is yet, uh, Joe. And, and uh, that's what I thought today. They don't have the identity on the offensive side of the ball. Defense is getting getting the identity. They're they're rolling, but the offense doesn't have that identity. You know, you see a couple quotes in the paper today from the linebackers, you know, a smaller version of Ben Roethlisberger. Um, he's going to be uh, one of the great ones in this league. Um, you know, so that's hope. But right now, it doesn't matter. If they lose the Peterson, you know, they don't have a run game, all this stuff, you know, it's, it's all nonsense. To me, it's all nonsense. They're going to come around. They're going to, they're going to get better offensively, but you know you, you have to give it a little bit of time because of, of Jeffries and Tory Smith. 
you know, Tory Smith dropped the ball. Terrible. You, you, you know, you hear I all that stuff. I don't care if he's as fast he's, as you say. He's, oh, he's he, got to catch the ball. He's got to catch the yeah. ball. And you know what? Zach Ertz is really, really good, yeah. but I don't think he's a good blocker. No, he's not. You know what I mean? You have and, somebody like Selleck in there. He's a blocker he is. and a receiver. He is. But now he's not in there as much, obviously, as much as Zach, as, as Zach Ertz is. But Ertz does, isn't a blocker. And, and Ertz doesn't he's get more yards of a receiver. after contact. I right? mean, it was a crazy, funky play down the sideline, but if you're a tight end, and you're running down the sideline inside the five-yard line. You got to break through that tackle to get in. You know what? I agree with you. And I look at Martellus Bennett last night, watching uh, Green Bay a little bit, and you see him initial Witten, contact, Witten, and Witten's the same way, yeah. dragging guys. Yeah. They're hanging on him. Yeah. He's dragging them. Two, three guys that take him down. They're getting that extra yard. Yeah, Ertz to yeah. me is nothing more than a glorified wide, wide receiver. Does he have good hands? Yes, he yeah. does. Yeah. Does he get open? Yes, he does because he has mismatches and he gets open on those mismatches. I'm fine with all that. But to me, to be a, a, a tight end in this league that, you know, is going to be in like a, in having a breakout year, they all said, and he's going to be an all-pro caliber guy, you got to get some yards after contact. And when you're inside that five-yard line with less than 10 seconds to go, find a way to get your butt in that end zone. I agree. Oh, man, I agree. That, I was, agree. that was annoying to me, man. It really, really was. So, but anyway, uh, I guess on the, on, the, on the brighter side, the defense played good, and I really think their defense – <laughs> is built around Jernigan. Jer I think uh, Jernigan you know is what? the best defensive player. Wow, we're we're agreeing a lot today. I want to well, yeah, go back years, out and come back because I don't know who are you. Years, you're finally starting you're, to learn. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, is that yeah. it? Because I want to check your ID <laughs> make sure it's really you. Really, yeah. who's you? you know, because Jernigan's is the man. I, 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 he's good. I agree. Again, I agree with you, and this is probably going to go down in the archives as a special day. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, definitely a big addition. And, uh, and I think Vinnie Curry's actually playing better too now. He's helping out. I mean, Barnett. I don't. I haven't even heard his name. They yet. just they'll just feed off each other. Yeah. And and going back to the running game. Going back to the running game. It's the same thing. You get the running game going. You get a few yards. You pop one for maybe six eight yards, and then the offensive line gets going. They get lathered up. Absolutely. They get lathered up and well, they so get the going. They back. want to hit somebody. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I've never, known, me a good, ball, I've never me ball. known a good running back who didn't get better as the game Give me the on. ball Absolutely. and you could do the whole Ezekiel Absolutely. Alley thing, but look what happened to yeah. him yesterday. Yeah. He got bottled up and he went he right. went south. Yeah. He went south, you know. When you're going good, everybody Absolutely. everybody's yeah. going good. All right, well, let's go. we're going to take a quick time out here. And we come back, I'm going to give the answer and have Joe guess uh, the answer for the Big Frank question of the week. Obviously, we have our game ball by the numbers and our, finally our five-pack picks and things like that. We have a lot to do yet. But anyway, we're having a lot of fun over here at the Colebrookdale Railroad Depot in uh, downtown Boyertown, right behind Durango's and whatever else is out there on Philadelphia Avenue. Get over here and check it out. But we're going to take a quick time out. When we come back, we have more right here on the Vallejo Stunt Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, 
Give Ron or Keith Reinhardt a call and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Hey, we're back here at the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Dave right now joined by Joe C., the dynamic duo, which is brought to you by Fred Beans of Boyertown. Make sure you get over there and see Denny Malloy. Tell him we sent you. The fall is a great time to get yourself a new car. And remember, we are live at the Colebrookdale Railroad Depot here in beautiful downtown of Boyertown, right off of Philadelphia Avenue and Washington Street behind Durango's. It's a great venue. Stop over and check it out. Get yourself a fun time. All kinds of things happening here in the fall and then in the winter on the railroad lines. We did talk a little bit about the Eagles now. They did lose their, their first game. They are 1-1, one one, but so are the uh, Dallas Cowboys, and so are the Washington Redskins. So the NFC, NFC East is really tight. Cowboys really got handed, got it handed to them by the Denver Broncos, and Cousins, again, Comes with a nice uh, late fourth quarter win to even their record up. The Cowboys look very vulnerable Vul last yeah, night. Yeah, vulnerable. Did. Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott bottled up by the Denver defense. They're the real deal they for are. sure. Man, are they They're fast. the real deal. Well, uh, you know, when you can play man on the corners out there like they can and Tlaib, Tlaib and Evan, you yeah. can say those guys can play. Yeah. Man, can they play. They shut down the offense, and they just throw everybody in there. And then Vaughn Miller and those guys are creating all kinds yeah. of haddock in the middle. You know, last night I was watching the, uh, the, the NFL Network and the prime, prime time with uh, Dion. You know how he, I, I don't he want, FaceTimes him. Yeah, he FaceTimes right. okay. And he had Travis Kelsey on, which he's a, he's a goofball. But um, Tlaib was like, they were back and forth. And, and Tlaib's like, you believe they went back to back on that same that same move? Were they kidding me? And it was it was hysterical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like he's like, uh, I thought you were going to get caught. And they were back and forth laughing. But he's like, I couldn't believe they did the same play. Yeah. It was so funny. Well, you know, those corners are crafty. I mean, yeah. you know, they're just not out there, you know, watching the cloud formation yeah. and stuff. Yeah. They know what's yeah. going on, and they read those receivers. And when yeah. you when you can read them, you know, a guy, well, obviously Sanders, but a guy like Tlaib and those other corners they have in Denver, they're going to jump They're going to jump the routes, and they're going to make you look 103 silly. 103 yards. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was, that was crazy. Good. It's funny you talk about Kelsey. They had a big picture on the back of the Daily News of him kissing his brother and changing, exchanging jerseys. I, I wasn't digging that. I'm not digging that too much. I really wasn't. They can do that somewhere else after the game. Uh, what, changing a jersey? Yeah. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. Why? Uh, what, what, why don't you? Why well, don't you have a problem? The Eagles just well, lost a football game. Okay, I know they're but brothers. You know what, but like, uh, the, how about the other players? I, I, just because, I, well, I, because whoever they're was brothers, doing it, I, I, no, all, all the players. Yeah, well, all the players. I, why are you they changing? They do it for soccer too. Well, that was a, good. You can watch all the <laughs> soccer you want. That'll be. Are you a not a soccer one. fan? No. No, okay. no, no, All right. no, no. All right. I'd rather watch curling or something than soccer. Believe I me. like to watch curling oh, actually. Oh man, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, all right, all right. Washington ahead. comes up with a big win, too. Yeah, you know uh, what? They're, they, they, they're looking good. I think uh, the Giants are going to be 0-2 tonight. In good way. Like, with Stafford. Is, with Beckham playing tonight? They're uh, saying he's questionable, but I don't think so. I don't think he's going to play because, uh, who was it? Um, I forget who it was said. It might have been Seth Joyner. I was listening to him on the way in, and he said that he had a similar injury. I don't know if it was Seth Joyner or not. But he, he always Brandon Graham. And he said uh, it was at least a three to four week high ankle sprain. High ankle sprain. And it's only been what, two? Couple First game, right? First well, game or was no, it pre No, it was in preseason. Pre -season. So and again, be... that was another innocent looking job yep. too. It didn't look like he was crushed or really that hurt, you know. Yep. And, and uh, But all of a sudden that, that high ankle sprain not working out. They said, you talk about injuries, man. There's some, there's some big time Hand players strings, getting down. Yep. Yeah. yeah. A couple of defensive backs for the, for the Eagles, the corners. And, 
And, uh, you know, I always worry about that kind of stuff. And I always go back to preseason. Are, are you ready to play football if you don't do much in the preseason? If the all is JV games and to see who, which guy's going to make the 49th and 50th player, you know, those guys that play all the time, they're not ready to play. And these hamstring injuries, they're going to be lingering on for a while. We talked about that yeah. last week a little bit and with Neil. And Neil said the same thing. And, yeah. and it, it's like, you know, they're, they're trying to preserve them as opposed to get them in game shape. Yeah. Because, you know, when when you, you're uh, preseason and you're on the practice field, it's different than being in the game. Well, obviously, you can tell by the missed tackle. And the they don't work on that but that you, much you anymore. Get, you know, it's, it's ramped up yeah. uh, a lot, especially yeah. at the pro level. All right, well, let's go back to our Big Frank question of the week. Again, brought to you by the Clean Cut Long Service and our buddy Big Z Batara. Uh, Ronnie Butcher, what's your answer? The question was about Deshaun Watson had 67 yards in his first NFL start rushing, and he is fourth on the list. Who's number one? Well, I'm, I have a couple people in mind. Well, uh, there's only one. You only get one. We're not doing I'm a process. I'm going to say Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor is a good guess, but no. All right. He is not there. Randall Cunningham. Cunningham. There you go. That's why I gave the question. He was uh, had. I was going to say Michael Vick. He was up there. Yeah. Figured Eagles. In his tie first in. start, Randall rushed really? for 90 yards. In his first start, he is number one on that list. I think Tyrod Taylor might be in the top three, but um, Randall's number one, and uh, Deshaun Watson is number four. Uh, yeah, very nice. Very but again, nice. I want to thank uh, Clean Cut Lawn Service and Big Z Batar. Keep it Frank Batar. Gone in our minds are the number one fan that we've ever had here on the Monday Morning Quarterback Show. That's for sure. We miss him, but he's still uh, with us every every week. You know, also each week we have a game ball, Joe. And let's, let's get into the game ball a little bit. You and I always have fun with that. And I, I just want to take a little kudos for my game ball last week to Mel Kuyper Jr., who said that the Eagles and everybody else missed out on Kareem Hunt. Sure they did. And he, he really looked like sure he's going to be a good pro for a long time. You know why I saw the, the clip of him running his 40-yard uh, dash in the combine? It was like a 4-6-2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but... Man. But there's some guys that are fast on the football that would be, field. You that know? would be Tom Brady, right? Yeah, exactly. Or you know, five was one, five, five something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, so it they, doesn't really they matter. They timed him with a calendar. It doesn't said. matter. No, it doesn't. It doesn't it really matter. Doesn't. And you know, everybody gets all keyed up. And well, look at the guy Ross from Washington who ran, who broke the record. What he ran a four one nine or something? Has he played it all this yeah, year? He, oh, yeah, he, he did that around okay. uh, yesterday. All right. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, Thur Tory Thursday Smith. Night. Tory Smith's one of the fastest guy in the league. He can run like Usain Bolt, but they throw him the ball and it goes right through his hand. Well, you know what? He was Baltimore and he was in San Francisco yeah. and he's moving yeah, around for a reason. Around. For a reason. All right. Go ahead, buddy. Who's your game ball this now week? You go. I'm all right. I'm going to go you first. first. I'm going to go first. I'm going to go with another old eagle. I'm going with kicker Cody Parkey. Cody Parkey is out there with the Miami Dolphins. Wow. Kicked four field goals in Miami's win, 19 to 12 or whatever. The last one coming from 50-plus yards in the last minute of the game to help them secure that victory. So Cody Parkey, my man, the kicker for Miami Dolphins, is my game ball of the week. Mm -hmm. That's hysterical because you know what? Is that yours? That was no, it wasn't. No, nah, well, I always have to have a backup with you. Okay. But you know, a lot of people don't realize how difficult that is, uh, yeah. especially as the kid from what <laughs> the the Chargers, yeah, the Los right. Angeles Char right, yeah, Chargers. Yeah. That uh, what's his name? Uh, Koo? Young Koo. Koo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah they froze I'm going uh, uh, Trevor uh, Simeon uh, from the Denver Broncos. Twenty-two for thirty-two. 231 yards, but four TDs. And he had a running game yesterday. He had C.J. Anderson, Anderson. Yeah. Yeah, and Jamal good. Charles. Yeah. So. But again, our game ball is brought to you by the Styling Room at 943 North Hanover Street in Pasha. My guy, Paul, he's been with us since day one. I love him, and uh, he's still hanging in there doing a great job. Again, the Styling Room at four, or 943 North Hanover Street. Give him a call. There's some openings there. You want to get in there and see him and They'll take good care of you. You know what? Before, before you go any further, okay. I, I, interesting thing uh, with Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, he threw 50 times, right? Yeah. He threw 50 times. Yeah. And that's not saying how many times he ran or dropped back to pass and doing everything out of the shotgun. We got all that. But you know in, in uh, six career games that he's thrown 48-plus times, he's one in five. Really? And did you know that Dan Quinn, the head coach of the Atlanta Man, Falcons is 5-0 and against him. 3-0 yeah. and as a coach and 2-0 and as a coordinator. And that's why the Eagles wanted him and they yeah. didn't get him. Yeah. 
and they right. didn't get him. Hey. Well, that's part of what we talked about before with Carson Wentz. You know, I don't think the Eagles are going to win consistently when he's throwing the ball 45 to no. 50 times no. a game. Uh, they got to establish some run game. They got to give their defense a chance to stay off the field, to get some rest. Uh, and I just don't think that's the way to win, unless you're Tom Brady and, and uh, Patriots, when they can dink and dunk and use those little slot guys, because every now and again they'll get away from the run game too. But they normally like to run it. Yeah, but look at look at Belichick's offense or or McDermott's offense, let's call it, because Brady threw 39 times yesterday, completed 30 of them, right. three TDs, yeah. all in the first half. Yeah. But then you look at uh, Jalisi, you look at James Gillespie. White Gillisey, you look. Thank you. Um, see, it's good that I come on here. You correct me. Um, <laughs> you, you have White. You have White. You, but you don't have Edelman. I know. But then you get Dorsett, and then, you know, he comes. He's there a Cooks. week. And you get Brandon Cooks. And, you, and it's, it's not necessarily, you know, you want to sit there and you want to blame, not you, but LeGarrette Blount, Sproles, Smallwood, we all say. But it's, it's the system. Oh, yeah. And Coach Mick, I'm sure, would, would it would attest to this it's not necessarily the players you don't need star players what you need is the system and you need to get the right people in the right position and then coach them up absolutely and that's what belichick does for the whole team absolutely. you saw brady oh, yeah. go down oh, yeah. and get up and yeah. just start going yeah. like this yeah. run and the whole team ran off yeah. the field yeah. one of the coaches was waving a towel for the field goal team to come in and within 10 seconds, they kicked the field goal. Absolutely. That was, that's, was a, awesome. that's amazing it is to awesome. me. It is. That is That's nice. That's what I like to watch. Well, you know, we also have another segment here, which we call By the Numbers, and that is brought to you by my buddy Jack Griesmer, who is located right down the street next to Seville's Diner here in Boyertown. Mm -hmm. For all your accounting and uh, pl financial planning and all that other stuff, give Jack a call. He's right here on Philadelphia Avenue. We talked last week about... Uh, our buddy Joe Thomas, the offensive tackle, oh, who yeah. needed four snaps yeah. to get to 10,000, yeah. and he got it. And uh, there's no official record. I, I listened to the guy today. There's no official record, but no one has had as many consecutive snaps. He has not missed one snap since he started. Over 10,000 consecutive snaps That's, in offensive tackle. That, that is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. That, is unbelievable. that was our by the numbers last week. And and you know what? I I, I was looking at something that said if, if Wentz throws as many passes as he does, he's on pace six, 680. Six, yeah. yeah, almost 700 Seven, yeah, passes. Yeah. Oh, and he's going to have to run for his life. He'll never be able to make the whole season. And, and that's, uh, that's the thing, too. He dropped back that many times. That's the running times. game, him running for his yeah. life there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he had to get I like that one. I like up. that. Yeah, yeah. There you go. so, man, 680. He's on the pace for almost 700 passes by the numbers this year. Do you got anything? Uh, uh, I do. I do. Do you, do you know when the, uh, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs sack the uh, quarterback six times that uh, they're 10-0 and under Reed? Really? Ten and zero. Wow. Six sacks. That's well, a that, lot of sacks. That Tom Lee and those guys, uh, you know, they have some pretty good guys on the outside. That's a lot of to... sacks, but they've done it ten times. I know. They're getting to the quarterback. Yeah. And that's that's a true. That's uh, 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 t to their defensive backfield. Oh, that's and that's what the Eagles are down. doing now with their defense. Marcus they're Peters, getting. Trifano. They're getting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're getting some of the pieces back there in the secondary <laughs> that are going to extend the play a little bit because they're going to have uh, coverage down the field and let the linemen get in there. So. Yeah, 75% of the time the Eagles throw the ball. That is not a good percentage. It's got to be closer to 50. Even if it's 60, 40, you have to have that threat of that uh, run game. All right, Joseph, well, we got to go do our last the commercial break here, uh, live from the Colebrookdale Railroad Depot here in Boyertown on the Velajos Dunn Insurance Monday morning quarterback. We're going to bring in our good buddy Jimmy Velajos. We're going to pepper him a little bit and, and check his football knowledge out. We'll have our five-pack picks, and we'll have a lot of fun in the last segment of the show. I, uh, your mom's here. I'd like your mom to pick for me. The, um, no, the... no, 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 no. We're not getting her involved. No, oh, come no, on. No, 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 no. No, she didn't get her makeup done and stuff. She'll be all a mess. Oh, She'll I beg to differ. She looks good. She does look good. She, she looks, looks very good. good. Yes, she does. Anyway, we're going to have some fun here after we come back from this last break. We'll be right back on the Velazquez Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. <laughs> official bank of the Monday Morning Quarterback. Get to know Key, your local, responsible, 
award-winning bank. Brookside Country Club, where elegance and excellence are par for the course. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, give Ron or Keith Reinhardt a call and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. We're back here live on the Velahustan Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show at the Colebrookdale Railroad Depot in Boyertown, PA. And again, I want to thank Nathaniel Guest and especially Frank Vitara for, for making this happen. Don't forget, there's all kinds of things happening over here. Get on their website at uh, ColebrookdaleRailroad.com. They have a wine testing coming up at the end of the month. They got the zombies and all kinds of things for Halloween. Uh, they have a farm to table. They have October and November. They have uh, all kinds of food going on. Lots of things happening over here. And again, this has been a great night for us uh, on the show over here in Boyertown. Again, I want to welcome my buddy Jim Vallajos, who has been my main guy and our title sponsor for many years. And uh, without Jimmy, we have a hard time getting this show on the air. And I want to thank him again for all that you yep, do. You're John, welcome. it's always good to see you. Uh, Joseph, it's always fun to, yeah. to get this guy. We're going to try to check his football knowledge here as we, we talk about some things in our five-pack picks. 
but let's uh, let's talk a little bit about. It. We have some time. We can we can break them down a little bit more. I know sometimes we're up against it. And we just uh, zip right through them. But last last week I was three and two, and you and Neil were both two and three. So I'm, I'm jumping out in a, in an early lead. Of Actually, course. it's not quite as big as I normally did you put have it. Out it. On Facebook, Twitter, and I did Instagram? not. I did not start to rub it <laughs> in yet. yet? <laughs> I did not right, rub okay. it in yet. I but we thought. did have a lot of fun at Docs last week, and and uh, they, it was a great venue and a great night. And I know Jimmy stopped over, and we had a lot yep. of fun uh, with that one as well. All right, so let's start about tonight's uh, game, which is a Monday night game, which we usually try to put in there. Even though the Monday night games have been stinkers lately, they're not near as good as those Sunday night games anymore. But we have the Detroit Lions going into New York and taking on those uh, NFL football giants. They, uh, they struggled last week. Their offensive line did not play very well against the Cowboys in week one. Joe, let's start with you. We're going to put you on the hot seat first. How do you look at the, the Lions and the Giants tonight? I'll tell you, uh, Matthew Stafford scares me. And Detroit's defense is pretty good. But I, I think uh, Duck and Chuck, Eli, is going to pull it out tonight. Okay. Even without Odell Beckham. Okay. I just, I just for some reason, I'm going to take the Giants. All right. You're going to be the star this week. Jimmy, you're going to be the check. How do you look at the Lions and the Giants tonight? It's at New York. I'm, I'm gonna take the Giants. I think they they'll play as well without Beckham than if he was there, anyways. So okay. I'll go with the Giants. All right, you're gonna go with them. I'm gonna go with a little bit of an upset here. I'm gonna take the visitors team because I like to go against you guys anyway. I'm not, as you know, I'm not a big Matthew Stafford fan. But they came back last week. He wins a lot of games in the fourth quarter. He has the ability to do that. And, and as much as they miss Megatron. They've really become a better team without him because they relied on him so much before in the past. Now they have a bunch of guys who are chipping in and are actually running the ball a little better. I'm going to take the line. Yeah, but between uh, Marvin Jones, um, you have Golden Tate, you have uh, Galladay now, yeah. the, the rookie, yeah. and then you have Abdul and you have uh, Theo Reddick, who's like a little scat yeah. back out of the backfield. Yeah. Uh, they're, offensively, they're solid. Okay, I'm going to take they them. Scare, I'm they take they them. do scare me. Yep, and I'm going to go against Jimmy and think that without Beckham, their their offense is hurting, particularly with the run game not so good. All right, Jimmy, you're going to go first in the next game here. We have Tampa Bay at the Minnesota Vikings. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Jameis Winston doing a pretty good job, and the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I'm not sure what Sammy Bradford's up to with his knee, what do you think about that one? I'd have to go with the Vikings. Okay, you're going to go with the home team on yep. that one? All right, Jim's going Vikings. I'm going to go, boy, if Bradford was playing, I'd take the Vikings in a minute. But I don't know. He banged his knee up. They're not sure if he's going to be out one week or, like, four weeks. You know? Casey Kasem. I, I mean, know. Casey Keenum. I know, I know. Is, uh, the I got to go. I got to go. He's going to be I'm playing gonna, all the hits. I'm going I'm going Tampa Bay. I got to go. Yeah, I don't uh, like to go visitors. Uh, no, I'm going Tampa Bay as well. All right. You got um, Winston. You got Evans. Jacquez uh, Rogers played real good in uh, Doug Martin's absence. He's out for what four? four yeah. More, uh, three more weeks. Yeah. Um, and Mike Evans. Deshaun Jackson is going to take a lot of the pressure off of Mike Evans. Because Mike Evans was the one who was going to be double team, been double teamed. Now the Sean's going to take some of that safety help away from him. He's going to have. He's well, Minnesota's have defense is going to hold him in this game. Yeah, they got Xavier a good Rose, yeah. Xavier they, they Rose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they could do it. Plus they have some uh, weapons it's not, too. It's with not Cook. A, it's going to be a close game. I'm going to go Tampa Bay though. Just I'm just not Casey Keenum. Probably. I know I'm not either. All right, here's an interesting game. Seattle coming cross country this to Tennessee. This is a real good game. I like Tennessee. I'm yeah. going Tennessee. Well, I'm not even going to give much of an explanation why. Right. I like Mariota. Uh, I like Derrick Henry and what he's been able to do. I think their coach is a good, hard-nosed coach at Tennessee. Their defense has improved, and Seattle's offensive line has been terrible. Joseph, what yeah, do you like in that? Man, uh, you know what? I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to agree with you and okay. go Tennessee as well. All right, Tennessee. Jimbo, who do you like in that one? I like Tennessee. The um, Seattle never seems to get on board until about halfway through the yeah, season. Yeah, they are. They are. So they're, the well, they're a slow starter. Yeah, they are. So they're exactly they right. They really are. And that's again, a, that's a very good one. point, Jim. And you know what? They're traveling across country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
they had a little tough time. They and, did. They did. Yeah. And Russell Wilson's getting pounded. He yeah. really hammered. is getting pounded. You see that one touchdown? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, back to you, I guess. Right. We got Oakland at Washington. There, listen, I am a Derek Carr fan. Me too. Mm -hmm. And Marshawn Lynch, I don't care about his dance. Yeah, I thought I like that, that's okay. That. He was home. He's excited. And they were kicking some butt. I'm taking Oakland. Okay. Yeah. You got Oakland, so you're the star. I'm going to put the star there. James? I'm going to go with Oakland. Okay, you're going Oakland, mm -hmm. too, huh? You're going Oakland. I like Derek Carr, too, but I'm going to go against you oh, guys. I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins. Oh. I'm going with Kirk Cousins. I'm going with the Oakland Raiders. You're going to be a little cousin? tired. No, he's not he's my not your cousin. cousin. He's not. I wish he no. were. Yeah, I can hit him up good. for some of that like, big money like, he's making. I, I like Kirk Cousins. Yeah. I actually Red like Redskins are going to be a funny team again this year, but, you know, they're home again. Uh, Oakland's got to come across. Uh, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with it. And then, of course, our last game, James. We have the Giants at our Eagles, the home opener for the Philadelphia Eagles, um, Sunday. I'll take the Eagles. Attaboy. I believe the Giants are going to get a little beat up tonight. It's going to be a short week, so. I'll, I'll take the Eagles. I get a little nervous. He may be taking my spot. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. I've been, I've been boning up. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going Eagles, I'm too. Going Eagles. I'm going Eagles. I'm going, I'm going, going Eagles, too, Eagles. because uh, home, I think they'll be pumped up. Home opener. Yep. Yeah. Again, after a tough loss, I think it's going to be uh, an, an Eagles victory. Well, you know, it's, it's been fun. We've had a lot of fun. Jimmy, thanks for stopping by again. Yeah, thank you. Joseph, it's always great. You're Pleasure. good to go next thanks. week, right? Yeah. yeah. We're in studio next week. This has been beautiful. What a beautiful night. Yeah, again, you know I want to thank Nathaniel Guest and Frank Gutierrez for help making this night possible. Mike's Brick right. Oven Pizza, thank you very much for delivering the food. I want to thank my mom and Aunt Jean for stopping over and being part of the entourage. She wanted to see a show before she went back south. And, uh, so we're having a good old time, Dave, of course, Robbie, and Matt, and all the gang here at uh, the railroad station here. But again, I want to thank all of our sponsors. I want to thank Key Bank, the official bank of the Monday morning quarterback, and all those good people. We will be back in the studio next week for more football action. So again, thanks again from the Colebrookdale Railroad Depot in Boyertown, PA. I'm Dave Ridenauer, and this is the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday morning quarterback. Good night, everyone.